This is episode 32, Constant Elevation, with my co-host, the legendary brother Jay, X-Clan, Black Watch Movement. Um, yeah! <laughs> All right. So we do this. <laughs> we got to call me that. So we do this build the uh, first Wednesday, typically the first Wednesday of uh, each and every month. Uh, we missed last week, so we always try to make it up. Um, all of our past episodes are on the Carrying the Culture YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, we're going to get into it. This is a structured build. So again, if you, you know, if you have questions or anything, please try to keep them related to what we're talking about so everybody can benefit. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to kick it off, man. You know, I mean, I've been quite vocal about some of these Hip Hop 50 celebrations. And um, we've talked about it in our last uh, show. You were a bit more diplomatic probably than me sometimes. But, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 you know, we both, we saw some holes there and, and, and some things and so I, I'm I'm really passionate about this as far as these celebrations and I guess I didn't even really wasn't really thinking about 50 years of hip hop but here we are and, and so you and I are going to take the chance take the opportunity to try to uh, come up with our own celebration is what we you know what we think it would look like if we were, you and I were the were a part of the steering committee and, and setting this all up and um, yeah. right so yes yes yeah so that's 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 where we're going to go and so we, we kind of have a similar focus but then you know we're going to go two different ways about it i think by the end of this build we'll, we'll actually we might have it all we'll have it all covered so yes um so my focus really overall with all of this well, one of the i guess one of my main gripes right is that it's all just rap music so and, and that just drives me up the wall because i came into this as a b-boy and a graffiti writer the rap my interest in rap didn't come until later right. um and to be honest, early, early rap wasn't the you know the most lyrical stuff going on. So, yeah. Uh, but so it's just rap, 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 and so that's a big thing for me. And um, and then another big thing for me here is is um, you know, kind of, I feel like we've gotten so caught up in just celebrating, right? We're not even looking at like. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? What can we do better? How do we look going forward? I mean, it's like, it's almost like, like we love it. We love to party. So it's like, this is party. Yay. So that's kind right. of my, where, I'm, where I'm coming from. And so what's your, what's your, as we start to do this, where, where's your, um, your angle from coming, coming from? Well, you know, my thing, the one thing that I know we would agree upon is that, you know, where the accolades are given. Yes. You know, and you don't, want to slide a, a one hit wonder across the stage and feel like that's, you know, like a tribute situation. You know, you want to give respect to consistency. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the one thing that a hip hop lacks. You know, I wouldn't think that somebody who just had a record out for two or three months can grace the stage at an event like that because it's not time for that. And then also with even incorporating the elements um, you know, you got to give tribute to people who have the ability. You don't want to have somebody up there, you know, a thousand years old doing the pop lock at the, at the, um, Yankee stadium. You feel what I'm saying? So, so, you know, you know how artists sometimes sing other artists songs that couldn't make it or whatever. You see a black dog, you see a common do run DMC or something like that. Bring out some of the new dancers who have, you know, respect for the old moves, moves that were named after legends and stuff, and then have that footage and stuff rocking in the back right. to give a tribute to them, but don't take us back. You know, some of the things like I saw them giving tribute to like, you know, singers and shit who had a style that wasn't, you know, that's not in the present, something that people would rotate to. So instead of instead of focusing in those eras get more acts and cut down from somebody performing for a half an hour to a good 15 minutes so you can get a run dmc a lauren hill a such and such and such and it's not you know us sitting there dragging in the you know dragging in front of this stage everybody's trying to do bruce springsteen and we only got a couple of hours to really absorb this right so, so point being the consistency, who's picking the elements? Are we picking them off of commercial value? Are we kicking, picking them off of impact? And this is something that I saw when they did the NBA 75. For someone like 
Dwight Howard or Tracy McGrady to be snubbed because you wanted to speak about somebody who's in black and white when they were just, you know, testing the lead. The technology has advanced to where you got to absorb that 75 a little differently right. than what you're talking about. But if that person from the black and white era was a game changer, like if you moved the three point line back or you did something like that. So with hip hop back to hip hop, we have to pick game changers. Right. Okay. We, we're not going to have Cameron on stage for a half an hour. We have a tribute to his set because Dipset changed things for Harlem while New York was a broadcast situation for the world. You know what I'm saying? When the center of hip hop was in New York, those cats was hitting the streets was hit with hits and representing the city. So if you're gonna throw a salute to them, condense it because there's a Run DMC on the card. There's a LL Cool J on the card, there's such and such. And then you can't do it all one day, bro. You know, that's like a two day festival. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not definitely not just a show. And you made a good point about the consistency. I've always said that consistency is the hallmark of excellence. Anybody can do something once. Somebody hit 50, 50 home runs during the steroid era, and you didn't hear about that motherfucker again after that. Right. Like, it's, it's, can you do it over and over? Like, when I look at, I mean, we, go, we always use sports analogies, 10 time all NBA. Like, that's some shit. Start talking to me when you've done something for like 10 years, 15 years. Then we can talk, yo. Like, one, there's a lot of dope. I mean, in the 90s, produced a lot of dope singles. In the 80s, right. produced a lot of dope singles. I mean, I still play them, but there's some albums. Skip, 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 skip. So oh, single fat. That's, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and that's a great point because labels are throwing single deals at right. that time frame. Right. Because you had to test the waters. Right. So this was like the D League of the industry. Like, yo, if you can get a nice A and B side and one of them jump off, then we'll consider you for a nice little album situation. Now, you know, most times that you're picking cats, they're going to be their Sunday best on that single, but they don't have the ability or the training to carry out an album. The label right. doesn't care because at the end of the day, it'll be a tax write-off. So if it hits, happy for everybody. So if you want to weigh the error, cats weren't even being groomed properly in hip-hop. So it's hard to, to channel them. I, I saw this point on TV the other day when a guy was saying, imagine Dr. J of basketball in the lab like how clay thompson and curry are in the lab you feel what i'm saying they weren't training like that where you had a personal stretch person and such and such and such so same thing with hip-hop you imagine if we had all of the internet to really touch our fan base when labels was really beating us in the head with selling music overseas somewhere or on another country and we have no knowledge and we here thinking like we're still small potatoes right when really worldwide we would have been stronger than ever if we had that knowledge right so now now artists have that direct knowledge of the label saying something they'll go right on stage you know say hey i'm eating dinner in the restaurant and have all the audience there and say everybody throw a finger who brought my single or whatever it's different power <laughs> you feel what i'm saying totally so, so so really when you throw a 50th anniversary they, they wouldn't even acknowledge the older cast because the success level is drastically lower so you got to figure out what are we putting these people on stage to say yes they are game changers so run dmc a game changer okay you brought rock into hip-hop fuse that and open up that market supreme and we're consistent for a very long period of time. Facts. You know I mean? Facts. So, so let's look at, so let's look at, I got this kind of broken out. So let's look at, so we're kind of getting to the criteria. Yeah. So let's, let's look at, let's continue to look at that as far as, okay. So, and we're going to kind of go through some of the, each of the elements. So like who, so let's, let's just start with, with the rap, rap, rap first. Who would you grab like to be, be as far as like the primary um leaders of this whole thing as far as you know, with, with, with the with the rap stuff well like like how would well, you, how, you gotta, how would you go about how, how would you go about highlighting like who to pick is what i'm trying to ask i would get a council 
of people who were extremely successful in the game. So you talk about someone like a Dr. Dre. You think about somebody like an LL Cool J. I thought it was dope that he represented from the Rock the Bells, you know, going out as a company like that. That's that's something that a lot of California labels and stuff do. They go out with their whole label and brand and bringing in the, the flavors that match the brand. So I thought that was dope. You know, you have people who were hit makers in that council, maybe a, a radio head or two. You know what I'm saying? Get, get one supreme show promoter who was underground more so than someone that's with Rock Nation. And I'm not dissing Rock Nation. I'm just saying someone that's a little close to the pavement because you got to go dig into the tech nines and the duck down and the high rows and things like that. So you have to have knowledge. You just can't go to the billboard and say, or to Google and say, Siri, you know, find me the top 10 or whatever. That's not the kind of get down that this is because you can't snub regions of music. Right. How do you do this to not honor outcasts, you know, in the lineups? How do you do that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you're not putting certain people on. Even Twister should have been in, in that conversation as far as consistent with hits for one, but also someone that has been in the Chitlin circuit for a long time. He, he gathered his own audience for a long time period. So I would hate to hear that he wouldn't have a slot. That would be a smack into the face of his region. Right. You know, Bone Thugs, you know, you know, there's so much artists, you know, that you can put on a major situation. When you got something like Yankee Stadium, dog, that's big dogs only. That's that's where you throw your tributes to DMX and your tributes to whatever, and those machines are coming out to say, yeah, these are some of the hits that we made that contributed to game-changing hip-hop. If you honor someone like Puffy, beyond all the drama and stuff that's around him, he 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 was responsible for fusing hip-hop and R&B. You know what I'm saying? Hit one of the major people for some, it's a, a, a mistake to do that, but for the business of the game, yeah. it did tremendous stuff. Yeah, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking and again, I mean, you, you, you brought this up in our conversation before, like, to be fair, you we would have to try to represent, every, you know, everything. And 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 hip hop had a wide bandwidth back in the day. You'd have to have an area for like the party music, which was big. You'd have to have an, a, a, a a you know a section for the, the 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 dirty south as far as like just acknowledging that you'd have to. Yeah. And 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 it is as, you know and and then the underground as well. Like like you said, you know what I'm saying you'd have to get so you'd have to have everybody from stretching Bobito right to. To the all the way to the other end to right. make sure because because in back back in the day we could turn the dial on man hear everything from you to nwa to two live crew right to jj fad ice cube you know you get my point here so correct so that's an important point there then to 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 make sure at least in terms of setting this up um from a music point is that all of the areas are are represented yeah because look when they do Lollapalooza and, you know, big concerts like that, those dudes have like two or three days, right. you know what I'm saying, to stretch out and advertise their brands of groups, you know, the Lincoln Parks and this, that, and the other. So, you know, we don't have that kind of organization, dog. No. You know, <laughs> and I feel, you know what I'm saying? We don't We don't have but that. You know if the show that we planned is going to go on in the first place. You know yeah, what I mean? For real, for real. You know, it's, it's like, yo, People don't even want to waste the time to throw something for hip hop. So my thing is, you got to organize and produce this thing to where the respect of how we come together and how we leave is seen in the process. So if we're not invite, inviting rowdy music, I'm not going to say 50 years of hip hop and invite somebody that's going to be totally just off the chain on some devilry bullshit. That's the other thing that you have to have someone that represents with decency. If if you went to another country to, you know, to be a diplomat to Africa or something for hip hop and whatnot, you got to say to yourself, what names would I throw? You know what I'm saying? Who would be a good representative? I would say, you know, someone like a Lauren Hill, you know, or even like, even like I'm saying, like a LL or, you know, someone who has had success, well-groomed, music speaks for itself to where you can flip it to where you don't look like 
you're rep representing an indecent genre. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The genre looks crazy when you turn on the radio dial. You know, my, my pussy's pink, my booty hole brown, nigga. You bugging the fuck out. And this is a number one song. And now shorties who hated it are now singing it on the low and the dark side of they shit. They getting it off. So I'm saying now you'll like that shit to a point where it becomes a Grammy worthy situation. And now, now when you go to pick something like uh, 50 years of hip hop and you look at people's success, you gotta look at the streams and the pushes and all of this bullshit, you'll include something like that. Of course. All right? right. If, if we go to Google right now and say top 10 conscious females, you're gonna laugh at what you see. Uh -huh. Everybody who's on this trade, when you're done with me, you're gonna laugh. And you got to say to yourself, who is putting together the lineups? Are you not including people who understand the worth of, of real, of, of the value of real hip hop and can really present it on that plane to where, you know, groups out here in the West that you would never think that would get an audience, bro, packing up full houses. I didn't even know who MF Doom was. You understand me? I didn't. I didn't get the whole story from third base and this, this, and that. I kept hearing this MF Doom. This dude packed the Nibbin Factory out here twice, back to back, just off a quick announcement, I'm gonna be in the house, dog. That's power, dog. That's power. But you wouldn't know how to present it in something like this. So you have to have a Yankee Stadium situation for the big dogs, the Jay-Zs, the Lil Wayne, this, that, and the other. Those are the people supposed to be representing in that plane. Cause that's the success of the game speaking from that platform. But you got what you, you when you go to an underground situation like the Rock the Bells was, now these people are in cahoots to say, let's put some of the headliners that would um that are more lyrical on a big headline card, like someone like an ice cube who's known for being a great writer, okay? On, on a card with something like a LL, and then you bring uh the duck down, the high roll, you know. You bring in a Stone Stroll label where you got your MF Doom catalog, your Jay Dilla, your Mad Lib, because this is hip hop that is being pushed to a corner and categorized versus underground versus commercial. And you want to kind of set that balance with something like this to say, okay, all eyes on hip hop right now, let's fuck with some catalog that y'all might not be familiar with. You feel me? So you now. You're covering all, you're really covering all the bases. Yes, sir. And, and yeah. now, and, and then also a mistake that was made, brother, that you got to find a way to transmit to people in the country and not so much depending on the online because now that's being controlled. If I was someone like LL, I would have went to the drive through um, uh, venues and launched it to where now crowds of people can enjoy the program without always having to give to platforms that don't give back to us. Right. This way you ensure that artists get paid because if you now have a camaraderie with a small market like drive-in theaters and you're doing a live exclusive thing, there's no leaking, there's none of that foolishness and then you get to have crowds of people to enjoy a solid production. Instead of, I'll watch it on YouTube, I'll watch it on whatever, I'll watch it on whatever. When you do things like that, those ticket sales go back to the machine who distributes to those artists fairly. That can be 10 more shows for artists that didn't get recognition if you do something like that. Right. You got to right. look at the punch and then the punch that's after. You know what I'm saying? These cats just want to make an impact, get the bag. We gave love to y'all cats. Now back to whatever you do. Yeah, yeah, back to yeah, that that back to the status quo. All right, so let me ask you a question because so like I said, before, you know earlier, you know, I thought we that we've just been celebrating too much it, rather than looking at other things. So one of the things I included that I'd like to would have liked to have seen would like to see the year's not over yet um, would be what we talked about this numerous times workshops on the business of this game. Um, workshops on, on for, for older older artists in the game how to move on social media different things like that networking like real building for and, right. and, and, and stuff like 
that panel discussions um, between, uh, there's clearly a rift between older generation and, and the younger generation. So some panel discussions there, so some real talk could come out. So I think right, it's- Let me ask you yeah. this on that point. The panel discussions, they fucked that up already. When they used to have, have the How Can I Be Down and you know all the little festivals where they gather all the executives, it became a meat rack, all right? So it, it, it wasn't treated right. So when you do this now, what would be the difference of those old conferences where people are supposed to be coming to get knowledge when it's really like, you know, I got a press pass and I can I can go now on the company card and wild out and do whatever. Oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you how it's different because I'm different. And if I'm putting this shit together, that shit's not happening. We working. Like, we're, we're, we're straight up working, period. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just being just, I, I have no other answer for that. I can't control, like, if I'm putting together this event, right. which we are, then I'm having the right people there. I'm having the right, I'm having, I'm having like, you know, social media executive. I'm having people that know, yeah, no, we're not doing that bullshit. Yeah, I mean, I'm just but I'm sure that they did that as well as then. Uh, yeah, we're only going yeah, to invite not, the the A and R. Yeah, and see, I'm stuff. not about the party. I'm not. I'm not the party dude. I'm the get work done nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, this shit. That's what I'm saying. That's my whole point. This shit's all about celebrating and rah rah rah. Fuck that. We we do that all the time anyway. We smoke right. our blunt. So, but let's build. These, but these commercial events kill that. This has been the problem. All right, we well, yeah. discussed the problem. I mean, but, but so I didn't. It, but then I don't. I mean, I don't think it could be. I really don't think it could be. Like if if it was a commercial thing, I I don't think it would be a panel discussion. I think it'd be maybe more just an informative informal TED talk or something or a quick talk on on right. the subject. But but I think the the real work I've seen always comes in smaller groups. And so when like and so what I'm saying, I, I'm I'm all grassroots, man. So like what I'm saying, I'm looking at real. I'm not looking at the both. This is a, this is us a utopian thing. So for me, the bullshit's weeded out. I'm yes. weeding out. You know what I mean? And it's about like, so that's that's where I think I think what you're talking about will be best on a college campus. All right. Now, in our conversation, I told you there was going to be a unity that doesn't exist in hip hop. Okay. Of course. When we boil down through all these conversations, it's going to be like, damn, we got to get the college campus. We got to get the people to unify. We got to go get a small drive drive through situation or make a deal with them. Look at all these places that we're unifying with, okay? That can exist now when people are really trying to throw their bodies for sacrifice to these bigger corporations, mm. okay? So so, so with what we're doing, if, if we went to a college campus and said, look, the intelligence side of the concert that's happening at the forum we're having the 50th anniversary here in California. We want to have the workshops here in the campus and a lot of students to mingle with some selective A&Rs, uh, such and such people, no consumers, no wild out, no performing. Nope. Like you said, the TED Talk. Now you're going to have to convince the college that you're not bringing something terrorist on their campus. When they turn on, well, what are you representing? As soon as you say hip hop out your mouth, it's an instant no. Because when they turn on the radio to hear, let's hear this hip hop. I don't really listen to it too much. Hey, go ahead and study. Suppose you bump into one of those at the campus. It doesn't, it's not even well represented. Right. Okay. Right. So we would have to get the proper representatives who are coming to there to say, understanding that we're on a campus, we're not going to bring you any raunchy ass artists. So the booty hole pink uh, shorty will not be on the panel because they've done this, dog. Come on, man. The yin yang twins were on the rock the vote, fam. Okay? Straight from the stripper club, straight to the podium to tell you to go vote because the record was popular. So you got to. You got to walk the dog all the way. You just can't say, hey, hip hop, and we're coming, and such and such. You got to be discreet to say, we're bringing common, well spoken, dope as fuck, and can come here and is going to have a ser serious conversation. And he's coming with the AR of Allen Records, the such and such of, of Universal, or whatever it is. You got to, we have to have reps. All right, you see how the ball players now are showing up in the tie and they're representing. For the, for the other players now and shit, you know, like they have their union and shit. 
We don't have that. That right. would be need needed to execute some shit like this. Exactly. Okay? I agree. Real shit. Nah. And, and that's how primitive we are because we relied on the machines to have that kind of organization. Like, you're the press, man. You know, find the right security. Find whatever. I want to get on stage, drink my shit, smack a girl on the ass, and get off stage and count my breath. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They didn't want the responsibility yeah. of somebody got to do something, my nigga. Right. All right? That's All the right. This is who I Look, what you think Black Watch was? Black Watch was, we're tired of every time somebody come with a house note on their neck that we got to go through a shootout, an innocent head gets shot down, whatever case may be, for a rope that may not even be real. Okay? So we were not only securing hip-hop events, but we were also holding campaigns to say, stop wearing gold chains. Start wearing some of this. Start wearing some minerals. Start doing whatever. So we went to make a change. You, in a situation like this, you want to honor groups who have done shit like that and that were dope. You don't want to honor someone like that and there wasn't something that they could say, yo, man, let me connect you because this is a concert, okay? And you have to keep the attention span. So the con there's, there's elements that have to hybrid with this before you choose them for a spotlight. Not like, oh, you had a dope song and you were talking pig Latin on it and I remember singing that as a kid. No, you might not make the stage this time. No, and, and this is no, not everybody, all the time. Everybody, you know, what I'm saying? man. There's a and there's a there's a lot of really good groups that actually fell through the cracks in in in, in that era too. Just on a, just because there was there was a lot of good music out. So the whack, I mean, yeah. So if you were, it's for the best of the best. All right. So I was, like I said, I did want to make sure we you know we 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 did discuss the other elements in there. So um, DJing. Being, the, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the backbone of this shit, um, the b-boy wouldn't be. Didn't you say dance, brother? Didn't you say dance as an element? Well, we got, I'm, I said I got DJ and MC and b-boy and grass. All right, so, so tell me who your choice. If you had Yankee Stadium, the break dancers have 15, 20 minutes to get down. Who are you bringing on stage to represent? I'd bring out uh, my man, B-Boy, why not? He's a former uh, vice president of Rocksteady. He's kind of like a good bridge. He's in his, he's like 40, but I mean, he's still teaching, still crushing shit. And and he is a good bridge between ge between generations. I'd bring out my man, Profo One. He's 48-year-old B-Boy out in uh, Bay Area, still crushing it, winning competitions, holding it down, better shape than I'll ever be in. Um, as far as performing and stuff like that, I, I would have, I would have those guys. Um, I would have, if, listen, breaking. And I'm saying they're dope, like Yankee Stadium, Eminem is on the card, Run DMC is yeah. on the card, such and such and such, they're dope like that. So they're dope, they're dope like, these people, are, these are, these are two of the best dancers in the world. All right. Like, so, so someone like the Jabberwockies who bought that kind of dance to Las Vegas and broke the mold. You would choose the, those dudes before the Jabberwockies. I didn't say before the Jabberwockies. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just asking. No, that's only two dudes. I would I would definitely have the Jabberwockies there. I mean, I would have them. I would have them there too. There's two different. There's two different styles. I would have some of the West Coast poppers, legend, legendary poppers, popping Pete. Um, I'd have some of those dudes dudes out there that are still like killing. Mr. Wiggle, Mr. Wiggles is still killing the Rocksteady crew. Um, as far as like, yeah, they, so I would have the best dancers in, so whoever they are, all right, I would have like, cause here's the thing, we just said it. So I'd have the best cause we don't want no, I didn't mention any of the pioneers as far as like rocking, right. uh, b-boying, you were old when you're 18. Right. So like your body, you know, these guys get injuries and everything. So as far as that, I wouldn't have them like rocking. I would do, you made a great point. I would have more tributes to them. Lifetime achievements awards for creating creating the moves. They, I mean, there's moves that we do still today that are named after these cats, and then have the best dancers in the world that are still about the culture go up there and represent. You know, I you know I, I would do with that. What up? I would take the best international dancers, make a team, make the best U.S. dancers make a team, and create a half an hour segment for that Yankee Stadium shit. A battle? Yes. That'd be great. I would that'd do that. Great. 
Just yep. hearing what you're saying. Yep. Look at you. Look at you. B-Boy Brother J, hold it down. Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> so B-Boy Battle. Look, that's 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 fucking real talk. B-Boy Battle. Uh, best U.S. Day. Hey, yo, and you could have like a um, it be have like a Olympic trials leading up to it type shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For, uh, because 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 the people that you name would now be on a U.S. team and it wouldn't. I, I, I as a consumer wouldn't be confused like who's this guy, or where's he from, and what's he known for? You know, you don't want to make people have to stand on their head to prove who they are. It's like yo, let me put y'all in a situation. Y'all in the arena, swing your sword and get down, basically. Best versus the world, and the world is really caught up, just like in basketball, the fucking U.S. team. Right? <laughs> so you see what the arguments are, and, and the world is getting better. Yeah. Because even in our conversation, we don't we don't fuck with international artists like they fuck with us. Nope. No, nope, not and, most of us don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think that's a problem. It's not like I want to hear somebody rap in French for 30 minutes, you know, to prove a point. But I think events like this should start spreading out to say, once we're done in the US, let's go over to Europe. Let's go over to Africa. And again, you're still using those streaming methods to touch people to say, regardless if Netflix felt it or Hulu felt it or not, we have a deal with all the drive throughs and whatever. So if you're in Idaho somewhere and you can't get to uh, California or Atlanta or wherever the hell we throwing this thing at, if it's several concerts or whatever, certain places don't get hip hop, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Certain certain places frown on hip hop, don't even let it in they in they situation, dog. So if you put it out there for people to say, yo, man, if you fuck with this vibration, go to the drive got drive through in peace. All right. And now we're learning again how to secure masses to enjoy hip hop events. We have to restudy that because we've been broken by COVID. We don't even know how to go out anymore. We have to go, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cats had that cabin fever so bad, they don't know where to go now. And then staying at home felt better. You know what I'm saying? But if you can assure people a safe time and have a better security around hip hop, this would be a great time to practice that. Uh, you know? and, if you pra and if you partner with other places that have that natural um, security, then um, you should be cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It should be a straight partnership, bro. You know, everybody ain't savage. Everybody's not doing a Travis Scott trample you and kill whatever amount of people. God bless those folks. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, some people do know how to go to a place organized and enjoy a situation. You, and you got to put it out there for those who do and not just always try to crowd everybody into a mosh pit and throw a $100 ticket on them and just say, fend for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you made a good point about um, the U.S. not rocking with the world like the world rocks with the U.S. And that, I mean, that goes to our arrogance. You know, we think everybody should fuck with us, but we would behoove us to look at other other shit and and, and see what's going on because a lot of the world is much more tapped into shit than we are. So I just wanted to add on to that point. But yeah, so man. real quick for everybody uh, jumping in, we're we're, we're covering. Um, we're creating our own hip hop fifty celebration, and we're trying to cover all four, all four elements. And so we. Kind of to recap, we we're gonna probably go back to it, but we discussed you know the rap, the MC element. So have a council to kind of pick who's who's performing, looking at the best of the best, covering all areas, commercial, underground, um, dirty south, like the, the 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 chopper style, like every every area represented. It should probably be at least a two day festival um, to cover everything, and then. For, for, for a, a knowledge standpoint where we would have something, try to have something on a, a college campus where there's workshops um, about the business aspect of this, um, perhaps developing a union, uh, health care, pension type things. What can we do to, to kind of further things? And that would be the more educational aspect. And then we said for the B-Boys, um, we would probably not be showcasing the the six late 60s 70s b-boys out there trying to windmill but do do some tributes to them um and 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 lifetime achievement award type stuff and then we would have a battle brother jay's idea we have a battle between the best u.s b-boys and versus the world um and and, and that would be a comp competition there so let's jump to the let's and, jump and i bet you them international motherfuckers will smoke here bro 
that, that's that's. <laughs> I bet just like that U.S. shit that just happened. Yep. Yeah. I bet you. I bet you. Because yeah. We have allowed people to study us in such a way, dog, and and now they get to train in in that way all the time, dog. U.S. don't even let the dance and break through. You understand me? Right. Even when we say Jabberwockies, dog, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, it's you you know they they're not, and it's not a white or black thing or a Japanese thing or whatever the case may be. It's just that you're not celebrating the essence of hip-hop they need to get out of that bronx bullshit. you know it started here and this and this and that and expand and say who was the first dj in idaho did he break dude did he do anything did he did do anything game changing if he did come through that dude the, the wizard down in houston inspired all of those artists down there dog that dude got a million fucking albums and motherfuckers don't even know his name and if you told him to take, take 10 of his best joints and get on here and represent in the name of Scarface, Lil Wayne, all them dudes. You would have so much following in the South. You don't even have to go and represent the whole dirty South, dog. Put the ones that still got it in the tank on the mic and let them sing their classics for their audience. They don't let people sing the classics that the audience is like enough, bro. Mm. They give what motherfuckers pay to rotate. So there's anthems. Did you ever go? Look, bro, I went to, um, what's the God's name? PST is making that green. People always say, what the hell does that mean? Fucking, uh, uh, school D. fucking D, dog. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so seeing him perform for the first fucking time, dog, was so powerful in his town. You would have thought Easy E was in Cali. God bless Easy E. But you would have thought Easy E had came out you know, hologram nigga in front of all the Cali, every word, every vibration, and every joint he threw on beyond PST, dog, rocked. So if you had him come on through his best three joints, then you're bringing a region to the people that are watching your shit. Cats are not thinking like that. Right, and he was right. a game changer for his region. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. And Schooly D is actually, I mean, widely considered to be the original, the first gangster rapper, like from his music. So, so, so game, talk about game changers, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's what we were talking about earlier. That's the type of people we need. And it was so, dope. Right. And it was dope. So, <laughs> and so Cassidy hear it enough to measure was dope. And that's why I say, how, who is picking for us? Okay? Not who us. Who is picking not for us, us dog? We're not picking for us. Correct. That's the fucking problem. <laughs> We, we've never picked for us, though. We've never done for us, and we've talked about that numerous times. We've never done. We don't. We don't own. That's why I want to do these workshops. We don't own shit. Yeah. Do we, we, what radio stations do we own? What publications do we own? What um, what what video? What what anything? I mean, on a, on a grand scale, Rock the Bells is the biggest shit. And salute to LL Cool J. He's, a, he's he's on our page. Salute to him. He's shown a lot of shown us a lot of love, man. He's the only one. I mean, you know, so. Just you know, we got we're forty minutes in, so I want to I do want to um get into the last two elements. I want to go into to the DJ, um, which has been grossly underrated in the past 10, 15, 20 years, um, for for a number of reasons. Um, so how would you incorporate the, the, the DJ into this type of celebration? Well, for one, I would make Rain Mixer Company, Technique, all of those mix of companies that we've been buying all this fucking equipment for pay for a segment for the djs to get down that's the first fucking thing they don't do enough for the artists we buy all this expensive ass shit 1200 uh, 1200 turntables bro when them shits first came out 800 a piece for a turntable my, my dog for you to be able to do whatever back in the day years, back for 100 now. years and never gave love so i would say Pay for cash money to come. Pay for Jazzy Jeff. Pay for Aladdin to show up. Pay for some of the international, again, some of the international DJs to come. And these are things that I was sprinkled through the show because you can't have that back to back to back to back. We're not, we're not at a DMC concert where Cass is practicing the new Transformer scratch, dog. This is, this is performance. So you would have DJs throughout the event 
DJ Cash Money representing da 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 Philadelphia. Throw a DMC style set and then you move on to the next. Run DMC's coming out next, whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's you would also you could also have like a um and get different DJs. Get Kid Capri. You know what I mean? Get a get a get a get part. You know, get a Marley Mar. Get you know get get Ron G. Like get yeah. But what, know, what, are, get, what are they gonna do? No, but I'm saying as far as like like is this what are they gonna do? They got they got spin the joints. I mean, like they're gonna break up the you break up the, in the middle of the show and spin some shit and holler at folks and shit. Kick a free don't cut. I would bring the technicians. You want the so you want the scratch the scratch shit exactly. just just the, exactly because it's not an arena for that. Someone like Kid Capri would be the host. Someone like Mar Marley Mall would be the host of the event. Like, yo, what's up with the energy up or whatever? These people would come out periodically instead of having like a house DJ. Like one DJ for the night, Kid Capri may be covering first segment, and then Marley Mall comes out, and then Red Alert, and then someone like Big Boy from the West or something. Because remember, we're representing all genres, and then you got to think about someone overseas. Yeah, scratch execution is yeah, no doubt, of course. Rest in peace, Rock Raider. Yeah. Correct. So you have these periodic hosts come out, you know what I'm saying? Play a little joints. Woo, woo, woo. Yo, y'all get ready for the break dances of Korea, woo, 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 whatever the fuck. But you got to show different personalities from different regions, bro. Right. That, that last shit they did was so New York. Even to the point where that, that girl come out hollering, get the fuck out of New York, whatever. What the fuck are you doing on stage? Because you got an anthem that's hot and y'all want some fucking, you know, some kitty, some kitty hits or whatever the fuck may be. Fuck that, dog. Okay? I, I wouldn't put a rookie in the All-Star game unless they were really whopping like yo this is the next like she's off the wall dog you got one song and you out here on stage talking about fuck out of new york or whatever fuck me be it's not your time wow i, I, I ain't hear about that shit that was at the yankee stadium shit yeah, you fucking right one of them shits the rock the bells or something uh, i saw i think i saw them both because she came out on snoop set and sang that shit and i'm saying fuck that you don't even deserve to be on this is a hall of fame type of stage. This is supposed to be the best of, and we got a world-class arena to represent hip hop. This could be the cleanup of all of this shit, okay? Because if if you're gonna go to a David Letterman show or whatever, Lil Wayne's not cursing on David Letterman, NBC TV nigga. So when you come to this, you gotta keep your shit clean as well because right now y'all are diplomats for the world representing 50 years of hip hop. So do you think some shorty coming out hollering at the top of her lung trying to be a fake ass DMX talking about fucking out of New York is the answer? Oh, uh, somebody said it was the Scarlet chick. Yeah, I've, I've heard of her. She's a uh, that's the best. That that's supposedly that's the, the best you have to offer, dog. No, it's not. But that's it's that's supposed to be Hall of Fame. If it was rock and roll, fifty years, dog. I bet you they wouldn't have no fucking girl get up there talking about burr, burr, my booty hole brown, burr, burr, my shit is pink. Get the fuck out of here, bro. On everything. It, we we don't, don't have the proper representatives, man. I don't mean to curse so much. I, I get amped with this because I'm emotionally attached to how we're represented, man. You know what I'm saying? It kills me, dog. Yeah, because and it's on us, though, right? We we keep going back to it, and we, and we, we always go back to it. We've had, this is a 30 second episode and every time it comes up it talks about you know how why we we we, we don't trust we hate we 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 we, we step on each exactly. other we get in our own way we fumble the ball mo back more than anybody else it's not you know like yeah but when do we pick it up huh when do we pick it up nah, i don't this know is, man we got we got, opportunity. Look, bro, we got chris coil we got chris coil on our hands my g hey, hey, it's butterflies hey, this was the chance to pick it up one of the original niggas of the game, LL, is throwing a concert, dog. All right? We can reset the game. All right? He's making all that we were about of all those eras look good. Okay? Now we're we, we supposed to be spinning off that to say, yo, nigga, we got an opportunity. Because the Run DMC can come up there. They sounded good as fuck, bro. If they can get up there after 40 years, whatever it is they've been in the game, and sound like that, I'll be damned if I can't see an artist right now sound good and solid and get sparked from that and say, yo, nigga, it's time for real shit to come back. Straight up and down, man. That's it, it is. an inspiration like a motherfucker, bro. And every promoter 
that has shut their doors to underground performers and and people coming through to enjoy that real vibration shame on you man you got to pass the baton you can't shut shut your doors and the way that these lineups have been set should show them shame on you dog how you cut them people out some of the best artists gonna be mailmen and fucking uh drivers and all kinds of shit when they could be in this game eating you got motherfuckers mumbling with a with a mouth full of mushrooms and shit nigga who are rich as fuck because people like to, to see black people goofy yeah. okay so when we get rid of that we can throw intelligence and in things like we're talking about until then we are stuck because now the consumer is looking for it to come a certain way you got to deliver it at a certain pace you know whatever the rich do if i'm rich all day hell yeah i'll be in the restaurant talking about here's my food here's my dog here's my broad here's whatever but in, in real time in real life it ain't going down like that you feel me and if, if you want it to be like that then you got to support why would common be a better actor than a rapper right now you got tired of the game why is black thought on a band for like a a, a fucking nighttime shit getting paid more than hip hop ever offered him and he's one of the nicest niggas in the fucking game bro why is lauren hill alien to us right now we know megan fucking stallion dog what the yeah, why is cardi b the, why was cardi b the 2020 woman of the year i mean i don't know we, you know, we right. down my g I, I you know we've talked about it numerous times like we're swimming upstream man like like i i don't know like fucking but here's the thing we we've said it before he said you want to see black, black people be goofy but then yeah we will we'll go out and be goofy for that check correct we'll, dance, we'll, we'll literally dance on tables motherfuckers will dance literally dance on tables like hey, man. Like, like you know for that shit. so you know it's it's it's, it's i don't know you gotta change off. it's hard and i'm sure a lot of people who wanted to do this said fuck it after thinking like we're doing right now yeah because there's no way that I would spend my bread on this when somebody in Dirty South is going to say, hey, you ain't had enough Southern niggas. And then somebody from the Midwest, what about Vanilla Ice? What about such and such? Then California going to say, dude, I I'm surprised in WA wasn't on any of these cars. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Period. Yo, bro, they changed the game. It's all weird. It's weird. It's they weird. The game, no matter how many anybody feel about their music, everything that branched from that was successful. Yeah. When we say consistency. Yeah. Okay, but you wouldn't invite them dudes for a show at the Yankee Stadium. You invite Snoop, but you don't invite NWA to say, yo, man, NWA first and let Snoop come out and represent because now you're representing the root of the shit. Right. Okay, you can't, you can't have the Fugees come. Now, the Fugees boosted up to where now high sales were popular 18 million, 20 million records. MC Hammer should have been there, 20 million records. Every song that he would have sung everybody singing and dancing and, and moonwalking and shit <laughs> these are game changers but you don't see them on there <laughs> you, you don't see them yeah. too short they came out as an independent wonder someone who came from out the trunk to consistent success so fuck, fuck the fact that your catalog is nasty as fuck like damn near porn you should be on that stage luke skywalker should be on that stage the bay or, area or, it's, it's a yeah, who's picking shit? Correct. <laughs> that goes back Correct. to the question: Who's picking it? Because we know it ain't. We know it ain't us picking it. Yeah. We know it ain't. We know it ain't us. Yeah, yeah man. real shit. So, but you know that's that's why we you know when I looked at it, dog. I'm like, it doesn't even make sense because, you know, where is judged from? Even if you had a council of people, you, you the consumer is never pleased, dog. You know what I'm saying? You're going to take it from sales or you're going to take it from this was my favorite group. M music is, is emotional and it's business at the same time. So it's a hard call. But, but, but we know who the greats are. And as long as you talk, talk to the right people, like a Red Alert, like a, a, um, a, a Dr. Dre, uh, managers, people who have made hits, niggas who understand the machine, and then you got to get people who understand the underground machine as well. Because there's a commercial side and the underground to this thing. Correct. You got to give, Correct. You gotta give respect to the, to the grades, you know, of, of cats that have really earned lyrically, man. 
and for the arts that surround it. What is the music without the dance? You know what I'm saying? What is it without the art in the background? You know what I'm saying? What is it about without the elements of the DJ? I replace the DJ with a machine. You know what I'm saying? And then you get mad now when the DJ becomes a producer and says, well, fuck y'all in. I'm just going to go get this bread from the commercials. Because that's what it is right now. All those cats that were DJs got angry, got their beat machines and said, fuck y'all. I'm going to go fuck with this girl. She's twerking. It's simple. It's easy. And the label loves it. Period. So we got to get the love of the DJ back. And then we got to we gotta get the love of all the other elements because now we're separated, dog. We're separated. It used to be all one. It used to be on the clothing. It used to be, you know, all in the entourage. You had a graph rider. You had a DJ. You had a couple niggas who do A, B, and C. It used to be your whole crew rolling. Not everybody want the mic. Everybody can rap now. Niggas right. weak as fuck. The whole crew want to rap. The dog want to rap. Mama want to rap. Everybody, nigga. See all the reality shows, nigga. Mama's rapping, making hits, nigga. We think it's weak, and that shit's selling big streams, like a motherfucker, bro. Like we work too hard, hard bro. It make you, it make you aggy, man. And I had to get rid of that. I had to get rid of that aggravation, my lord. I'm gonna sit here and, and and be mad at the game that wasn't made for my feelings. Fuck my feelings. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what this 50th shit is saying. They said to the NBA niggas, fuck your feelings. Tracy McGrady's not here. Nor is the White Howard. <laughs> Nor is some of the other graces. You like, damn, you gave that nigga an award before this motherfucker? We in that shit right now with the hip hop get down, bro. It's yeah. bad. That looks we, gotta, we gotta get our power up, man. We gotta get our money up, bro. That's the only answer. Yeah. We gotta get our money up and then we figure out low. Is this worth putting a house note? to go and celebrate hip hop in 2023? Is it really gonna be consistent when it leaves here? <laughs> Would you take your house no dog and do a show like this and feel like, hey, tell your girl like, yo, baby, we're not gonna buy that house. I'm gonna put about 150 grand on here and get the artists up here. We're gonna celebrate hip hop. Would you have faith in that brother? <laughs> That's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a now negative, you, see, you know. Now you see oh. why hip hop is suffering. Because no one wants to make that sacrifice. Right. No one. Right. 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 And certainly not collectively. Not I mean, we can't we can't get it together, man. We gotta collectively. Yeah, I feel like we're, we're like we're like we're like uh Charlie Brown with the football and shit with Lucy. You know what I'm saying? She just pulling the football out from underneath them. Like I that's what I, to me, that's what hip hop is to me. <laughs> like this, like this what? Bam, bust my ass again. Correct. Shit. Correct. And, and cats have gotten tired of that, dog. You know, yeah. what are you really representing right now? You know what I'm saying? Talking about, yeah, real hip hop. What is that? And where do you go support that at? <laughs> then somebody's going to say, yeah, man, we got to go do this concert for hip hop, nigga. I fell into that trap, dog. I had to see for myself to get on or off of it. Mm. To see if I want to continue to sacrifice to say, damn, you can have a conscious label. You can have conscious touring and all this other shit. But are the artists coming out? Grassroots artists, some of them don't even go online. So I said, yeah. how do you, I, I, I to ask the marketing people, how do you even market to people who don't even fuck with the internet? Yeah. <laughs> how you gonna yeah. sell them something they don't even have something to play with? Some, yeah. of, my audience, some of my audience is like no. that, dog. No, it's facts, though. That is facts. That's, that, that's, that's what I'm laughing because I know people like, like they got still got flip phones, all that shit. Like, they don't, they don't even want them. Like, yo. So, so, they, yeah, they, so they would fuck with the kind of spit that I'm giving. Of course. So they would have no, there's not even street promotion anymore. Nah, it's, yeah, it's, it's some... that, that was an art in hip hop. Yeah. How do you think niggas was getting to the shows? Passing the art to the folks. This graph writers were used for, for bait as well, dog. We don't even have that anymore. There's not even album covers. So you 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 cancel all of the elements out of the game and then expect them to gather to give respect to who? My booty pink, my asshole brown. Duh, duh, duh. Come on, nigga, you want me to give respect to this? And you cut me out of the game? <laughs> a a, a light-skinned Canadian runs the game, dog. <laughs> Riding private jets from coming from acting and shit, dog. And KRS and all these great lyricists and all this other shit is still sitting damn near on the bench. Aubrey, yeah. The Crazy. grassy the, the grassy high nigga. Right. Nigga from the grassy high. 
<laughs> Great. Okay. Great. Enough. And there and there we are. And unfortunately, we gotta we gotta get out of here. I got two more shows. We go live with our man Nutso in two minutes, and then we got and then we break down um we break down four classic tracks where people say to their pop culture. I'm breaking down uh the floor the fly it's close got fat five and I'm breaking down something else which I fucking forgot. Um so yeah man it it is what it is and, and we we I don't know. I, I, I really don't know at this point, man, but but I, I appreciate the build. It was it was great doing this fictional thing. I hope everybody got something out of it. I mean, I, I think it was dope. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing the way. That's how the track I'm doing. So, um, but yeah. Yay, family. I enjoyed it, man. I, I, I just, I'm glad we got a chance to revisit the topic, man. I know it sounds crazy when I feel it, but I just felt it was uncovered ground. And I really want people to understand where hip hop is lacking. We don't have unity and we don't have a sense of business. They do need those panels, but they have to be in the right place, man. Yeah, no, of course, no, all, all, all good shit, man. And you know, saying we always on the same time. So um, appreciate everybody. We're gonna get this up on the YouTube channel. All 31 prior episodes are on the YouTube channel. So um, rock with us, rock with Carrie in the culture, rock with Brother Jay, of course, you know what I'm saying? Our, our legendary co-host. So thank you again, family. We going live in two minutes with Nutso. And uh, appreciate everybody joining in on the show, man. Salute. Blessings to everyone joining us, man. Much respect. One love. Peace, family. Peace. All right, family. One hundred.